Amen. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. And let us take partake in the communion together. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Father God, we thank you for sending your Son as a sacrifice for us and we remember him and honor him today in taking this all together as one body you can take of the bread father we thank you also for not only giving your son to let him come and live on this earth but to die for us and to shed his blood that we may have forgiveness healing and wholeness in every area of our life and by his stripes we are healed. You can take of the, of the juice in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> God bless you all. I would like to introduce Pastor Sri, my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Bless God, bless God, for God is good. Amen. 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 Um, as we have requested, if you have any prayer requests that you would like for us to be praying, please let us know. We will pray for you, pray with you. As we, as we seek every one of you to be praying for us, praying for our family all the way in India, so many of my brothers, my sisters there, they're all in a shell shock right now with what all we are going through. So continue to keep us in prayers that God's mercy be upon us and God's comfort Amen. be upon us. And continue to pray for that land, continue to pray for India, continue to pray for uh, people there. Um, you know, many of you here are facing some uh, tough times and uh, things like that, but there it is even tougher. So let's continue to pray for them. Pray for our brothers and sisters all around the world uh, that are going through times right now and uh, continue to believe that God's resurrection is on its way. Amen. Amen. Though the sorrow may last for the night, but the Bible says the joy comes in the morning. Yeah. Amen. I'm praying for all of my family members, especially the Virabhatini and Waluri family members, my mom's side and my dad's side, that the comfort of the Lord will be taking over us. It's not easy what we are going through, but let's pray that God will comfort us, God will strengthen us, and the family will rise up to be the family of God, to be that worshiper, to be that 
group that can still say we serve a living God. Amen. 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 So let's please, please stand with us, stand with our uh, families as we go through this thing. But uh, let God's plan and God's revelation be revealed to us that we may walk in the fullness of his love and his glory. Amen. Amen. You know, there are so many people that are going through so much right now. Right now, don't forget to call on the comforter, the chief comforter. You know, as we were singing the song a moment ago, um, that he, he, he went, he went, the, the song was singing like this, that, that whatever pain that we are going through, you know, the, the revelation that has hit me uh, is that whatever path I am going through right now, I don't know the answers. I don't know where I am going. I, it just feels like it is so dark out there. But he went through it before me. He went through it before me. So I'm choosing to walk behind him. I'm choosing to trust him. So he may lead me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. Amen. All of my family, anybody that is watching, I just want to encourage you all. It's time, this is a time for us to be led by him. Let us follow him so he can lead us into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Um, let's pray before we get into the word. Father, in Jesus' name, I call upon you for any of those people that are going through struggles right now, Father. Whether it is mental, physical, financial, relational, no matter what they are going through, Father. We pray that you would comfort us, strengthen us, renew us, that we may stand tall for your glory, Father. That we may continue to stand on the right side of the throne room. Oh, we bless you, Father, for your glory that is shining upon us. God, instead of the sorrow and suffering, Lord, I pray that you would renew our visions, renew our strength, that you would renew us, that we may walk, that we may rise up like eagles and soar like eagles, God, for your will, for your purpose, for your plan on this earth, to fulfill your vision on this earth, Lord. And we ask for you to take over the sick beds, the proud, the, the proud people that are suffering right now, especially in this uh, coronavirus thing, Father, the families that are going through turmoil, the fear, the, the pain, the, the unknown. Father, I pray that you would take over the land right now, Father. This whole earth, Lord, right now, the United States of America, India, no matter where it is, Father, Brazil, Lord, I pray for your comfort to be falling upon us, Father. For your mercy to be taking over our lands right now, Father. Any of us have not repented of the sins, Father. We repent of them that you may show your mercy upon us. And at this hour, God, this is not an hour for darkness, for the, but for the light to shine, Father. Let your light shine through us. Shine for us, shine over these nations, Father, where hopelessness seems to be taking over. God, I pray that it be taken over by hope right now, Father. Hope be filled over the streets, filled over the public squares, filled over the highways and the byways right now, Father. Hope, hope of deliverance, hope of salvation, hope of healing right now be rising up and we thank you for it, Lord. And your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Today, as hard as it is for me, last week was hard, knowing that uh, my dad is no longer with me. But we know, we all know, the faith that we have in his word gives us the confidence and the comfort that we will see them. We will see them soon in the eternal glory. This week, last week was that, last Sunday was that, this Sunday, I don't even have my mom. But bless God, God has given his love, 
God has given his plan. God has given a hope. God, that is what I'm continuing right now on, is hope. Hope gives us a reason. Hope gives us energy. Hope gives us strength. Hope pushes us to a place that you have never been before. It's only hope that can do for us. And God has commanded us to walk in that hope. I know where my parents are, but the reality of it is I miss them here. The hurt is real. For so many of you here, all of you standing behind me and standing with me, and all the family out there in India who is supporting and praying and standing with, us, with me and with us, the pain is real, pain is real. But bless God, even his comfort is real. So I'm choosing to walk in that comfort. Today the title of my message is Choose Life. Choose life. Why do I want to pick up on this thing? As much as it relates to me and the things that are going around us, God has given everything for us to walk through. He gives us a commandment. He gives us a path. He leads us. Amen. That's the beautiful thing about the story of cross. The story of cross is trying to tell us I've been through this. Amen. The, one of the main things that it gives me is comfort that I'm not alone. Amen. He is not asking me to do something he haven't done. Yeah. He went through it. So now he is giving me an example and inspiration. And above all, he is giving me an empowerment through his Holy Spirit to do that. Amen. 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 So go with me to the book of Deuteronomy. 30th chapter. Deuteronomy 30th chapter, starting from verse 11. This is where God is establishing for Israel the precepts, the standards by which they should be conducting their life. It's what we call as the promised land. You know, do we have a promised land right now? If we think of it, all the promises of God are A and Amen in Christ Jesus. Amen? amen. Yeah. That is our promised land. That's where the journey is to, to go into the promises of God. And the promises also include eternal promises. You know, eternal journey, eternal life. So if you want us to be walking into the promised land, this is kind of like a, 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 a prerequisite for you to be walking into the promised land. So let's uh, walk through this thing from that viewpoint. From that viewpoint that, you know, this is an instruction that God has given to the whole assembly of Israel, the whole church of Israel. What, what he needs them to be doing. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So, um, as you, anybody here, if I was to ask you a question, how many of you want, how many of you want and desire to live in the promises of God? <laughs> I know without a shadow of doubt, every Christian would say yes. <laughs> every Christian want to live in the promises of God. But even the, uh, as, as bizarre as it may sound, even a non-Christian want to live in the promises of God. Because the promises of God are good. Yeah. There is healing in promises. Amen. There is deliverance in promise. There is uh, prosperity in promise. There is uh, well-being in promise. There is wholeness in the promise of God. So everybody desires the promise of God. But, you know, we have uh, the saying, many dream, but only a few achieve. Because when it comes to the promises of God, for all of us, we dream of the promises of God. We want the promises of God to come to pass in our life. But God, Bible doesn't give us just the promises of God, but the pathway of how to inherit the promises of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. He wants us to inherit the promises of God. 
Inheritance doesn't happen easily. Amen? You can inherit it easily. It doesn't just fall. You have to walk. When you walk, you will be able to inherit. So many of us are looking for an inheritance in God's kingdom, which is the promises of God, but not following the path he has set for us to inherit those promises. One of the main things that I have learned as soon as I have become a Christian, when I dedicated my life to God, gave up uh, uh, on my um, sin life and wanted to be one with God, when I became a born again Christian, that's the time I have realized something that, you know, um, Christianity is not just mere listener, but he is also a doer. What you do is what enables you to have what God has done. Amen? Amen. So this is, this is what I want us to see from that viewpoint. Go, go there to the 11th verse. Let's read it, please. For this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear and do it? But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. Amen. The word is very near you. The word is very near you. You know, if that is more than accurate ever, it is now. Yeah. You can click the button, the word is there. The word is available for us no matter which way you turn. Turn the TV. You know, this was one of the great memories I, my, my brother was sharing with me um, the day she passed away. Every day, she has a habit of listening to the Word of God. Every, every day, she turns the TV on, and there is a certain station that she turns on, and she would listen to it. My brother gave her a coffee in the morning, and then turned the TV on to the station that she likes, where she usually, every day, this is her routine, every day in the morning, she wakes up, and she listens to the worship in that, in that uh, station. So my brother turned it on for her so she would listen. You know, she's not able to uh, move or respond much, but uh, he wanted her to listen to it. It's a routine for her. You know, the word of God was so near, she would, you know, uh, uh, she would bask in it every day, even though she was not able to move, even though she's not able to do much, she would turn the TV on and turn these channels where she could listen and bask herself in this word. Even the last day, I think my brother gave her a good send off in that line, that she was able to listen to the worship. The same thing is true for all of us. What do we do? My mom being immovable as she was, she still chose the word. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. She still was wanting that word to come into her life, that, that phrase to come into her life. So from that, I take an inspiration. We have an opportunity. We have everything available for us around us. How much we can grab onto it. How much we can, we can suck it into our life. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, please. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, and that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away, and worship other gods and serve them, I announce to you today no, that... No, but pay attention to that. If your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. That's a very key thing that you, we have to understand. How do we end up serving other gods? The first phase of that is worship. What are you worshiping in your life? 
that determines who is your God. Yes. I want to talk about this thing. I want to call upon this nation. America, what do you worship? Are you worshiping your paycheck? Then the paycheck is your God. Are you, are you worshiping social justice? Then social justice is your God. Are you worshiping uh, racism? Then racism is your God. No matter what you are worshiping, that becomes your God. Oftentimes people do not realize this thing. Worship is giving preference. What is, what do you prefer in your life? What are you preferring in your life? I want us to think about it all of our life, all of, every one of us. Let's take a pause. Let's take a moment and think about it. We know, we want, you know, anytime if you uh, uh, gather around and talk to anybody, everybody wants a revival. Everybody wants a move of God. But the problem is we are not worshiping that God. When we don't worship that God, he cannot move. We want the God of the Bible to move. The God of the Bible is the only one that promised a revival. Amen? Amen. The God of the Bible is the only one that promised I will turn things around. The God of the Bible is the only one who promised a resurrection. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. You know, God of the Bible is the only one that promised that. If you want the God of the Bible to come to pass in your life, you better worship the God of the Bible. This is where the problem is. Many Christians, many of us who are near to the word, yet we do not worship the God of the Bible. We worship ourselves, we worship our opinions, we worship our, our ideology, we worship our uh, culture, whatever it might be. We are worshiping other gods. Hence, we became idol worshippers. Idol doesn't always mean a statue. Idol doesn't always mean a statue. You may have carved for yourself an image. There have been many people that have that, that are so near to God, so near to the word of God, yet the image of God is not carved in them. But God says, look, I have carved you on the palm, of, uh, uh, on my palm. The palm of my hand, I carved you. Have you carved your God? You know, sometimes I see people having tattoos of God, tattoos of cross, they want to carve him. Well, I'm good, but I want to ask you something. Did you carve him in your heart? Amen. Have you carved him in your heart? I've seen so many people write scriptures on their bodies, on their, on their things. They tattoo those things. I'm not saying I'm for or against it. I'm only trying to say, have you tattooed him in your heart? Did you carve him in your heart? Is that your utmost worship? Is he your worshiper? You know, God, God, God loves us so much that we sang a moment ago. That are we giving him that place? Go ahead, please. <clears throat> I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Amen. Amen. This is a very important juncture in God's journey. Man's journey with God. This is a very important place. I want us to understand the importance of this thing. You seldom see God calling witnesses. This is one place God is calling witnesses. That is where we need to understand how important this is to God and to us. And there he says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today. Now let me ask you a quick question. Have you seen heaven? Sky. Have you seen it? Have you seen earth? You live on it? As long as those two things are there, this witness is going to be there. 
Their witness is going to be there. So it's important we cannot avoid this whatever God is giving here. Whatever he is setting up here, we cannot avoid it. I didn't know this. I didn't know this. We cannot say that. We don't have the right to say that because God on that day called heaven and earth to witness. What he is about to say. He said that I have set before you life and death. You know, I have set before you life and death. Now it's always a, 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 a challenge and a question. Why would God put those two things in front of us? I want you to know something. These are the same choices God has in front of him. God has uh, those same choices in front of him. And he is only doing what, he is only asking us to do what he already does. So even in there, the, the reality of this situation also is in every frame of your life, in every phase of your life, you will have two options. In every frame of your life, no matter where you are going, no matter what you're doing, you have two options. Life, death. Life and death. Both of them will be present in every situation you'll be going through. There is a setting, there is a setup that has already been in motion. That setup is you have life and you have death. In every frame of your life, every situation of your life, there is life and death. And remember, the scripture says, life and death are in the power of your tongue. Amen. There is a reason why all of these things are connected. You have to understand this. We have to understand the connections. God deals in the black, in the black and white. He doesn't deal with all these mysterious things. That's why he starts in the beginning itself. There is no mystery in this thing. You know, we, we create mystery. We call God works in mysterious ways. I want to know that, say, that God that you're talking about. The God of the Bible is not a God of mystery. Amen. But God who said and who does. Amen. Whatever he promised, he fulfills. The God, we don't serve a God of mystery. When people say, oh, you don't know God works in mysterious way. No. That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is, he said he will do it, and he comes to it. That's the God of the Bible. We need to know more of the God of the Bible because we have all these false notions around us. So much so that we, we ignore the God of the Bible. We don't acknowledge or we don't recognize the God of the Bible. Isn't that a shame? We are always acknowledging all these mysterious, mystical, all these uh, uh, crazy things that are out there, but we seldom recognize the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible said, if you call unto me in your day of trouble, I will answer thee. Yeah. That's the God of the Bible. Amen? Amen. And no, I don't know if God is going to listen to my prayer or not. Let me throw my prayer out there. That's the God of mystery. That's how idol worship is coming in. Amen? Amen. Amen? But that's not the God of the Bible. We need to serve the God of the Bible. It's time for church to turn back to the God of the Bible. The so-called church, we need to turn to the God of the Bible, not the God of uh, uh, some imagination and false notion. That the churches are full of this junk. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just because I'm preaching, I'm not using the powerful word, but I'm just trying to say just junk, 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 full of junk. Because the God of this mysterious God have come so much and took over church. I never knew that God. You know, many times we call upon this mysterious God. That's why we don't have answers. We don't get answers in our lives because we are pursuing something called mystery. Mm. Oftentimes mystery ends up mysterious. You will never find answers. With God, there is wisdom, there is knowledge, there is understanding. He wants us to find things. He wants us to crack the course. He wants us to know the unknown. Amen? Amen. 
He gives us, he pushes us to a place where we can come to a better understanding of things, where we can grow in the knowledge of his will. That is his thing. Oh, I never know God's will. No, 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 you do. He, was, he has given us the spirit of truth that he may lead us into all truth. Amen? Amen. That is why he has given us the spirit of truth. Not for us to walk in illusions and walk in the mystery or anything like that. He knows how painful it is for us. How hard it is for you to go through things. He knows those things. Yet he makes way for us to walk through it. Amen? Amen. He never says, oh, okay, next. This is not movie with God. You know, the movies are like, okay, at one moment, all of it is struggle and shambles and all that. By the next frame, everything is all good. But God is somebody who walks through with us, who leads us. Amen? Amen. Amen. The God of mystery, we need to stop serving him. And we need to start serving the God of the Bible. Amen. And he clearly said, I have set before you life and death. I, wa I wanna, can I simplify your life? I just want to simplify your life. I don't know about you. I like simplification. You know, when I as simplified as it is, I'm able to, I'm able to deduct it easily. The complex we make it, the complex we go, it's hard for me to find things. I just want to simplify this thing. There are no many options. We only have two options. We only have two options, life or death. The choice you make today either will give you a life or it will give you death. So it is important for all of us as Christians to understand whatever I am choosing today will determine my future. It is important for us to uh, understand how important it is for me to choose. Okay, now look at this thing. That I have said before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Blessing and cursing. Nobody here wants cursing. Nobody knowingly, unless you are a sick person, you wouldn't want cursing. You always want blessing to come into your life. Amen. Even like I said, a non-believer who professes himself or herself to be an atheist, they want blessing in their life. Nobody wants curse. But here he gives, I am putting them both before you. Life and death, the blessing and the cursing. Both all of them are connected. They're connected. You want blessing, it is connected with life. You want cursing, it is connected with death. So now simplify it, if you simplify it, if you choose life, you will have what? Blessings. If you choose curse, if you choose death, what will you have? Cursing. Cursing. It's simple logic. Let's simplify life. Every man, every frame that you are going through, everything that you are going through, whether it is with your marriage, whether it is with your family, whether it is with your finances, whether it is with anything that pertains to you, you have two choices. Life, death. What you choose determines your future. Therefore, now God himself says, I'm putting those two things before you. But he says, therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, Choose life. He has given that standard for us. He has given the platform for us. He has given the clarification for us. Now he is saying, therefore, choose life. This is where we need to understand the heart of God. He is not going to force you to do things. He wants you to choose. Many times we ask God for to take over and take over the trouble, take over the pain, take over the sin. But he is always trying to tell us, choose life. You choose. You want to choose death? Yeah, there is cursing right behind me. You want to choose blessing? You want to choose life? There is blessing right behind me. So every opportunity, every frame that is presented to us is presented with life or death. 
But if you want to choose something, I want to choose somebody who walked through it. Jesus walked through it. Amen? Amen. And, and what did he do? He chose life. Amen. Now, the irony, think of this for a moment. In When he, you know, whatever Jesus chose, we consider it as life. Amen? Amen. But in the path of that life is also death. He had to choose death, didn't it? Think about that for a minute. So what I'm trying to go after is sometimes as we are choosing life, or not sometimes, many times as we choose life, there will be opposition, there will be persecution, there will be trouble, there will be tribulation, there will even be death. Amen. But that doesn't, cannot stop you because you chose life. What is that life? The life eternal. So when the life eternal is pumping into our life, no matter what kind of a hiccup, not what kind of a struggle you may have faced, you still can resurrect. Because death could not hold life. Amen? Amen. So it's important for us to set the standard in the beginning, not at the end. Mm -hmm. We try to repair the fruit when it is a root problem. We got to start at the root level. Amen. Hey, you want to you, you want to eat an apple? Don't sow orange seed. Amen. 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 You want an apple? Sow apple seed. It's as simple as that. You want mango? Sow mango seed. You want life? You want blessing? Sow life seed. Amen. Sometimes choosing life is not easy. Now sometimes, many times, choosing life is not easy. This is where God is making it clear to us. He is not saying it is easy. He is saying it is important. Amen. Or in many cases, it is necessary. For Jesus to choose the cross, it was necessary for him to choose that. Had he not chosen cross, today we won't have resurrection. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We have to choose. We have to choose the will of God. Sometimes when we are choosing the will of God, there may be suffering. Mm -hmm. But you should be okay with it. You should be okay with it. Because life has its way. You know, the best and beautiful example that you can see around us about life is a life, a person's life, when a life is happening in a mother's womb. There is so much that changes. There is so much that needs to be uh, accommodated and demanded. You know, the life inside demands so many things. I remember a lot of the women told me, they told me stories about when they were pregnant. Okay, they would eat liver. I never, in person, they never liked liver. But they wanted to eat that. They wanted to eat this. They wanted to eat that. Most of the times, it's a desire from within. And they had to put different clothing, different things. They had to uh, do all kinds of weird stuff. The way they squat, the way they stood, the way they rode. Everything is different. Because they were choosing life. And even at the point when they are trying to push that life into existence. It was, it was the most painful thing. It is the painful thing for them to go through. When they are going through all that, what is it? What do we see in that? Life. Life. Life requires all those stages. That's why God put it in front of us as a visual. For us to understand, if you are choosing life, it's not going to be all roses. It's not going to be that. It has so many ups and downs that you have to choose as we are choosing life. That's exactly what God chose for me. I'm not always a nice person. Amen? I'm, I have issues. I'm good. All right with God one day. The next day I'm falling. He still chooses me. Amen. In spite of me being a pain and a trouble for him. He still chooses me. Amen. Even while I was his enemy, he chose me. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why it is important for us to understand choosing life doesn't always mean it's all a bed of roses. It is not. It is not. Let me be very real and clear to us. Choosing life requires work. 
Choosing life requires commitment. Choosing life requires consistency. Choosing life is to give up on our flesh. That's why Jesus said, if you want to follow me, pick up this cross. When Jesus picked up the cross, what did he choose? He chose life. He chose life. Amen. And for you and me, whenever cross is being given to us, we don't want cross. We don't want struggle. We don't want pain. We don't want, we don't want anything come against us. We just want us to just sing kumbaya and walk through. Have that utopia that we, never, we, we, we think it exists, which doesn't exist. In the reality of life, it's a matter of choice. Amen. I just want to present to you a, a simple example where we can see some consequences of the choices. Go with me to 2 Kings 5th, 5th chapter. 2 Kings 5th chapter. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Starting from verse 1. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. Now I want you to visualize this man's life. Naaman is a commander. He's a man of valor. And the Lord even used him. I want you to I want to talk to men and women of God today. Amen. The people who want to be used by God, who is being used by God. I want you to understand this situation. The situation is that God, he, he is not a reject of God. He is actually an approved man of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Even, even for him, but he was a leper. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. Oftentimes we think uh, uh, if we are called by God or if we are with God, there is no leprosy. There is no issue. There shouldn't be an issue. That's true. We always think, we try to mask, we try to say for ourselves, oh my goodness, if I am walking with God, why God, why? Why is this trouble? You know, I heard somebody complain. The other day my brother was sharing this story. Somebody was complaining that God, they are going through a persecution just because they're, they, when it comes to their garage clicker, only one clicker is working. That for them is persecution. Imagine that. Most of the people don't even know if somebody is watching this from India, they don't even know what garage clicker is. <laughs> For this lady or this person, not having another garage clicker is a struggle. Where, where have you fallen? Where have we fallen? Think about that for a moment. Many of us are considering things that are a struggle, uh, doesn't, even, doesn't even cut that, that, that standard. We have, to, we have to think about that for a moment. And this man of God, even though he had honor, he had strength, he had reputation, and even he had God backing him. He was used by God. Even though it was done like that, even though he is in that place, he still was a leper. Even though you and me may be going, maybe may have a good and close relationship with God, that doesn't mean we are free from issues. Yeah. Amen. Don't you dare measure yourself that you shouldn't have this struggle just because you're walking with God. As a matter of fact, Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yeah. The Bible clearly says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But thank God it doesn't stop there. It says, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Amen. From them all. Not one. All. Amen. You, you and me are prone to affliction. Let me say that. You and me are prone to struggle. 
You and me will be attacked. You and me will be going through lack. You and me will be going through pain. You and me will be going through loss. You and me will be going through shame. In spite of all those things, I'm challenging you all and I'm encouraging you all. The deliverer is on the show. The, the deliverance is about to show up in my life in Jesus' name. Amen. I attract deliverance. I accept deliverance. I need deliverance. My deliverer is moving in my life right now. Amen. 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 I am afflicted, but I won't stop at affliction. Because the deliverance is here. Glory be to God in heaven. I receive my deliverance. For the word of God clearly says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Amen. From them all. Amen. 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 I speak that upon us. I speak that upon our lands right now, upon our nations right now, that the deliverance from all Amen. be happening in our lives. Amen. Amen. And the Syrians had had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Mm. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Now, I just want to take a pause and think about that young girl. The young girl was put in his place in Naaman's court as a slave. She was put in there as a slave. Yet, she never stopped preaching. Amen. I want us to think about that for a moment. No matter what kind of a hardship you might be in, a hard situation you might be in, you should never stop preaching the gospel. Amen. That is what bought her ticket out. Mm -hmm. At the end of the story, that's what we will see. But that is what bought her ticket out. She did not stop preaching the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. She never did. No matter how crippled her situation, she could have been, you know, that same group have captivated her. Mm -hmm. She could have been, God, fire them down. God, Send forth your, your, your anger against them. They brought me here in as a captive. I shouldn't be here. She didn't hold to that bitterness. Come on, somebody. Don't we need that freedom from bitterness these days? Yes. This nation needs a healing from that. People are so bitter. Bitter at each other. That we don't see beyond it. The hour for now is the hour of gospel, not bitterness. Amen. We are so bitter at each other. We are willing to chop off each other's throats. We are willing to chew it. We are willing to destroy it. We are willing to cause chaos. We are willing to jeopardize anything and everything because we couldn't get over our bitterness. Mm -hmm. It's time that we walk away from bitterness and walk in the healing that God has set for Amen. us. Amen. This young girl has set a great example for us. Even in spite of being a captive, she was bringing healing. Mm -hmm. Amen. She wasn't dealing with them according to the wrongdoing, but according to her right heart. Glory be to God Amen. in heaven. According to her right heart, not according to the wrongdoing of the people. Can somebody be liberated today from that? Amen. We need to be liberated from that because we are doing according to the wrongdoings of the people rather than the right heart of us. We ought to, or we are required by God and the word of God to act according to the, to the rightness of our heart because that's where God is dwelling. That's where he has given us a new notion. That's where he has given us a new thinking. And that's where he has given us a new culture. Amen? Amen. That's why he, it is called New Covenant. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God in heaven. Amen. Go ahead. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. 
So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. Hmm. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. Mm. So it look, was, look at this thing. I want you to understand. I want us to understand this uh, predicament here. You know, <laughs> the, the king is now sending authority. I want you to understand something. Sometimes all power that you have, all strength that you have, can't do it. Can't do it. That's why he clearly says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Can we say that? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He wants, he wants us to understand how limited we are and how unlimited he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we don't no longer have to depend on our limits when we can depend on all his unlimited resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. So go ahead. Um, then the message have come to the king. King was given an instruction. Remember, they are his captives. The king of Israel is serving the king of Syria. So now the king of Israel is so in that pain, in that struggle, I'm like, what am I to do now? If I don't do this, they'll kill me. They will destroy the nation. But I don't have the capacity to do this. I don't have it in me. Have you ever faced a situation where you felt like it is beyond your pay grade? <laughs> You know, we go through things in our lives, sometimes it just feels like it's overwhelming. It's too much for us. But we need to understand something. That challenge is not for you. Can I repeat that? That challenge is not for you. The, 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 the challenge that have come was not to the king. The lady, the young girl, spoke about the prophet, not the king. Mm -hmm. True. Okay. Are you with me? That's right. The, the young girl witnessed about the prophet, not about the king. But the struggle came to the king. Are you with me? Yeah. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. The struggle was, didn't come to you. It is trying to challenge the greater one that is in you. Come on, somebody. Amen. The greater one that is in you is going to swallow it up. I want us to know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. This challenge that has come upon you, the trouble that has come upon you, is unto him. Let him deal with it. Amen. Let him deal with it. Many times that's the struggle. That's the struggle, letting him deal with it. Right now, that is my struggle. That is my struggle because my emotion, my feelings, my, my, my strength, my everything, my memory is there. Now I need to make way for him. I need to make way for him. That's where the problem is. Go ahead. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Come on, somebody. Please let the struggle come to me, is what Jesus is saying. <laughs> Please let the struggle come to me. Please let that pain come to me. That it will know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. The problem is, you are trying to deal with the struggle, it is about your pay grade. That is about your capacity, that is about your strength. Amen? Amen. Go ahead. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, 
Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and, and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Now look at this. He, this man has a set of expectations. Thank God we have a God who destroys them. Because he calls, where is the wise? He calls, where is the wise? The simplest and the insignificant and unimportant things matter to God. The simplest things. You know why I take comfort in that? Because I may, be, may not be of that significance, but for God I am very important. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead. Are not the Abana and the far, far, the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Now, was, can I say that? Can I, could I not wash them and be clean? No, you cannot. No. This is where the choices are coming here. We need to understand the effect of choices. The choice you have, what you have available for you, what you think you can do, or what is, what is your capacity, is not what God is asking you to do. When God is needing you to do something, when God is asking you to choose life, you better choose life. Yeah. Not what is available for you. There is so much that is available for this commander. There is so much that is available for him. He could have chosen all those things and lost his miracle. Are you with me? Yes. Do you want your promise? Do as it was said. Go on. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more than when he says to you, wash and be clean. Now that's where the problem is with our society right now. If God have said, hey, you need to fast for 100 days for you to have salvation. Everybody would make a 100% effort to go there. But when God says, hey, believe in my son whom I have sent on the cross to die for your sins. Believe in him and confess it with your mouth and you shall be saved. That seems so simple. Yeah. That seems so low. That, she, that seems like it doesn't cut the intelligence of people or it doesn't cut the sacrifice of people. Mm -hmm. That's why they are rejecting the cross. Because yeah. for them it seems so simple and so foolish. Amen. Amen. But you want a miracle? You want a salvation? You want deliverance? It has to be through that cross. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, that's the only way. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm running out of time. So he went down and dipped seven seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him. And he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. Uh, look at this. He was able to conclude something. Are you able to conclude? Mm -hmm. This is many times the problem of Christians. They are never able to conclude. They are still looking for answers. Mm -hmm. They are looking. They are still searching. The moment you can conclude Jesus Christ is the Christ. That was that is the gospel, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When you can acknowledge that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. When you can acknowledge and come to the conclusion Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the ultimate, the final. Mm -hmm. When we can come to that conclusion, everything else becomes okay. Yeah. That is where the struggle is right now in America. The biggest struggle is that the conclusion is not happening. They have Jesus, but they don't have Jesus as the Christ. Amen. 
Everybody has Jesus. You know, I grew up in a nation where everybody and everything is a God. I have seen many people. I walked into many Hindu places where they had Bible in their house, where they had a picture of Jesus Christ in their house, where they had a cross in their house. I have seen so much of that. And I, I thought when I came to the U.S., it's no different. It's no different. They may not have a, a statues or they may not have all those things, but they have their paycheck, they have their, their culture, they have their things, other things are taking over. Amongst all those things, there is a cross also. Amongst all those things, amongst all those gods, there is Jesus also. Amongst alcohol, amongst drugs, amongst all these things, there is Jesus. There's no difference. It's time for Jesus to become the chief cornerstone. Amen. Not a stone that was rejected, but the chief cornerstone. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. But he said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So Naaman said, then if not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Yet in this thing, may the Lord pardon your servant. When my master goes into the temple of Ramon to worship there, and he leans on my hand, and I bow down in the temple of Ramon. When I bow down in the temple of Ramon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Then he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from a short distance. Hmm. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Look, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian while not receiving from his hands what he brought. But as the Lord lives, I will run after him and take something from him. I will run after him and take something from him. Now the main character is coming. This is my main message I wanted to talk about. It's about Gehazi. The whole miracle is done by God. The man of God is okay with it. Man of God didn't want to receive any offering. But Gehazi couldn't hold himself back. Mm -hmm. He had to go into it. He had to get into the mix. He thought what was done was injustice. He wants to bring justice to this equation. This Naaman guy should pay. Should be giving the offering. How can we let him go? That was his philosophy. That was his thinking. As he was going through that thinking, uh, go ahead. 28th first verse. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. The Gehazi pursued Naaman. I want you to imagine for a minute, what are you pursuing? Mm -hmm. Many times we are pursuing Naaman that was let gone by God. That which God wants you to let go. That which God wants you to leave it alone. Amen. Yeah. We're getting quiet here. You know, God wants us to let go of our bitterness. God wants us to let go of our hatred. God wants us to let go of some things, but we are pursuing it. Mm. We think we haven't gotten the true justice. You know, I'm going to make a statement here. Many times choosing life means not taking things into your hands. Many times choosing life means not taking things into your hands. Mm -hmm. Let God be the judge of it. Let God restore it. Let God work it out for you. Let God breathe life into it. Let God bring it to the fruition. Let God bring the healing. Let God bring the deliverance. Let God do his miracle. Let God do his job. Amen. That is choosing a life. Amen. When you let God do God's job, you're choosing life. We are pursuing Naaman. God didn't want you to pursue him. And this man pursued it. Gehazi. He pursued this thing. So Gehazi pursued Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, He's all well? Go ahead, read please. And he said, <clears throat> All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Indeed, 
Just now two young men of the sons of the prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. My master has sent to me sent me. Many times we are using God as an excuse for our sin. The Lord told me, God is on this side. I know people, I see people quoting scriptures for something they talk about and, and try to destroy people, destroy lives. Mm -hmm. I've seen many people quote scriptures about abortion, mm -hmm. saying it is God's will, saying it is okay with God, mm -hmm. about abortion. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So many times we are using God's name in vain. Many people are using it even in the church. Many people are using the name of God in vain. Yeah. With God there are no two sides. There is only one side. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Either you are with him or without him. Either you are for him or against him. So this man chose something called death. Because he chose what he wanted to choose. Go ahead. So Naaman said, Please take two talents, and he urged him, and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments, and handed them to two of his servants, and they carried them on ahead of him. When he came to the citadel, he took them from their hand and stored them away in the house. Then he let the men go, and they departed. Now he went in and stood before his master. Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. Mm. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Hallelujah. Don't you think God went with you when you were walking in that hatred? Don't you think God went with you when you were walking in that shame? Don't you think God went with you when you were thinking of hurting? Don't you think God went with you when you went, when you went to that place of remorse, guilt? Don't you think? My heart went with you. God is with you. Remember, Emmanuel, God is with you. No matter what time it might be, no matter what phase you might be in, God with us. He is going with you. Go ahead. Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing? Olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants, Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence, leprous as white as snow. Oh, look at that. God said, choose life that you and your descendants may live. Mm -hmm. This man chose death. Mm -hmm. And him and his descendants became lepers. Now, whatever choices you are making today is not going to just impact your life. It's going to impact the generations to come. Amen. You think it is your own life. No, you're lying to yourself. No, no, no. You are bringing a curse upon you and upon your family. So it is time for you to let go of the things, let go of the name on that you shouldn't even be pursuing. It is time for you to let him go in Jesus name. So we may pursue what God has given to us. We need to let go of things. Choosing life, like I said, many times choosing life means not taking things into your hands. Mm -hmm. We need to stop taking things into your hands. It is my pain. It is my grief. It is my hurt. Trust me, I know. I know. I am in that grief. I am in that pain. I am in that struggle. I am in that, in that, in that uh, valley of shadow of death. I know what it is. Yeah. But it is not for me to pursue Naaman. It is not for me to pursue Naaman. That which needs to be casted upon him. That's why the Bible clearly says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Amen? Amen. Let's end this. John 14, starting from verse 1 through 6. John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. And if I go and prepare prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Glory be to that God. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Mm. Jesus said to him, I am, am the, the way, way, the truth, the truth and the, the life. life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Amen. Now it is important for us to choose life. Choose life. Amen. That we may have the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Jesus made it so clear when you are choosing me, you have, you have, uh, you will, you will need, when you are choosing me, you are choosing life. Mm -hmm. And when you choose life, you will see the blessing working into your life. Gehazi represents a valley of vision. Now we need to understand where is our vision. He is not able to see what God is seeing. He is not able to see what his master was seeing. It is the same thing is a problem with all of us. We need to see what God is seeing. We need that healing. What is God seeing right now? Right now, the biggest thing I see for myself is God has gone through this. Amen. God has gone before me in Amen. this. Amen. I am doing it by faith. I'm going to continue to press myself in faith. I'm going to continue to push myself in faith to do what God needs me to be doing. Amen. God bless you all. We love you. If there is anyone out there who have not received this love into their lives, if there is no anybody that is out there who have not received this life into their heart, I'm here to extend my faith, my hand with you, that you may come into the kingdom and receive Jesus Christ as your life source. So you don't have to live any longer in that curse. So we may choose life. When you are choosing Jesus, that's the biggest and the best decision you can ever make. Yeah. You are choosing Amen. life. Amen? Amen? So I just want to give you that opportunity, my brother and my sister. If that is you, you want to make that a decision today. Let's pray together. Father, I believe you sent your son, Jesus, as life. as life. I receive, I receive life, life into my life. Into my life. I, am no I am no longer a sinner. Forgive my sins. Forgive sins. Cleanse, me. Cleanse me. From now on, From now on I, am I am yours. Receive me Receive into your kingdom. Into your kingdom. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If that is you who made that prayer, please let us know so we may rejoice with you and bless God with you. God bless you. Love you. It's time for uh, uh, my brother Brian to receive offering. It's time for offerings. God bless you. Amen. 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 I'm Brian. Um, thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I just wanted to share something real quick with you about when we actually started the church. Uh, when we started this church, we wanted to do things differently. We didn't want to take resources and pour them into ourselves and spend money on ourselves. We wanted to change the world no matter what we had. If we had $5, if we wanted to use that $5 to change the world. And I want you to be assured that every dollar you give goes to change the world. We do things, God multiplies things in ways that, that are miraculous and we are able to do so much with every dollar that we have. Mm -hmm. So I want you to rest assured that every dollar you give goes to change the world. That Amen. you're not just pouring into a church, that's not going into a building, Amen. that every dollar goes to change lives, to bring people salvation, to feed and clothe people, um, and to, to make a difference. Amen. Um, you can give online, covenantfusion.com. There's a give button down at the bottom. Um, all your giving is tax deductible, um, but it does go to change the world. Amen. Please join us on Wednesday for the Bible study, um, and let's do our confession. Mm -hmm. you ready? Let's see the <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren.
So Lord, let everyone be blessed. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your faithfulness in this time. It's not easy. We know it's not easy right now, um, but God is faithful no matter what's going on in the world around us. Amen. Ready for a confession? Amen. Yeah. We are Covenant Fusion, Fusion Church. Church. We, we are a body, body of believers. We are we blessed to be a blessing. We, we are filled for, for his, his glory. glory. Amen. 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 See you on Wednesday. God Thank bless you. God bless. Mm-hmm.